Let's get Switzer Super Report Tanya Negline recently talked about positive gearing into shares, which might be unusual for many investors to hear, hear about that. Though plenty of people are positively geared into property, so to see why Tony likes his investment strategy, he joins me in the studio to explain. How are you, Tony? Very well, Peter. I've got to confess, mate, I've been very biased towards you. I always thought that, you know, your main function for me was to explain all the boring stuff, you know, and, and, you, make, and make it at least understandable and usable for all the people out there in the super world. But you actually invest in super as well, and I haven't asked you about that before. No, well, investments big big part of the game it is yeah, it is a big part of the yeah game. but i've just never even said to you like you know all my mates were having drinks we're saying what are you doing for super but you know i've left you well i feel really bad about that but we gotta get it tonight Great. Yeah, because you made a comment recently in an email and you said, well, I, I like positive gearing in the, sh in the shares. Yep. So explain for people who haven't thought about what that means. Well, basically positive gearing is where, uh, unlike negative gearing, so gearing is obviously a fancy word for saying I've got a loan yep. and I've used that loan to buy shares yep. and the shares pay me an amount of income and at the end of the day I've got more income left over than my expenses of on, on the interest on the loan. Yeah, and so what do you do with that? Well, you can either reinvest it into uh, shares or yeah. you can use it to pay your mortgage off or you yeah. can use it to pay school fees or, or anything you like. Yeah, I think the example you used where you actually said that and you can pay, pay down your mortgage, and I like that because a lot of people often come to us and ask us about, you know, should they go long super or should they pay off their mortgage? But I thought this was a, ni a nice little strategy. Um, and I guess those people who would have adopted this sort of strategy when CBA was $27 and Westpac was under mm. 20, mm. That, they would be really picking up a fantastic yield and uh, be laughing their, all, all the way to the bank, in a sense. Well, they would. They would. I, I think the important thing to know or to recognise is that Australian companies have been outstandingly good at increasing their dividend payments over a long period of time, mm. and those dividends have increased faster than the inflation rate. Mm. So that's a really good story. So if you reinvest those dividends, you get, you know, you really do see in real live action the idea of, um, you know, accumulating wealth over time, you know, at a, at a very, very quick rate. Mm. But even if you take them as income, you've got a, you've got a very quick uh, revenue stream that increases quite quickly. Mm. And you can, as I say, you can either reinvest that revenue stream back into the same thing to earn more of the same, mm. Or you can use that revenue stream to pay down, you know, other other debts that you might have. Yeah, and and I guess you know, the, the other argument is that you can take the the, the, the excess revenue you made and pay against your loan to reduce your loan as well. You, you should could you could do that. Mm. You could do that. I, I think the important thing is is, that, is to be positively geared mm. as opposed to negatively geared. Mm. Negatively geared means that you are reliant solely on the value of the asset, mm. and of course we all know that you know when you when you. Um, when you do that with shares, it's obviously going to go up and down in value. And, and Tony, there's been like a, a, a the opposite of double jeopardy. There's been a win-win situation with dividend paying stocks because over the last two or three years, everyone's chased them. So you've got capital gain as well. You have. Yeah, that, that's right. But then... It's like, it's like selecting a suburb like Paddington over one that no one wants to move into and you watch the place go up 10%, 10% every year. That's correct. Mm. Yeah, so it, it, is, it is very much the same. So everyone's been chasing it. But of course, it may not necessarily always be like that. Mm. So, um, of course, you can never, you can never, you can never guarantee mm. what you'll be able to sell that asset for. Yeah. And so as a result, um, if you have the income coming in, which is you know a good a good constant stream of income, you yeah. know once or twice a year or thereabouts, um, you know it's coming in. You know that you've got a good chance of making it grow. You're not solely relying on one aspect of the of the investment mm. to make money, and you do that when you're negative gear. And, and let's face it, there are plenty of people who positively gear into property, and they don't know what their property's uh, actually valued. From one day to the other. They, they could, fall, could fall 15, 20 per cent. They're not even watching. Who cares? No, that's right. As long as they keep getting their rent. They're banking, they're banking the money. And so it's, exa it's a very similar strategy that you do with shares. Um, probably, not, not exclusively the case, but it's probably the case that on the whole, dividend income has seen to increase at a faster rate than what rental income on, on, on properties do. Yeah. Obviously, it's, you know, horses, for, they don't always do that. No, and it depends on the company, but I know I've seen the, the CBA 
dividend yield um, curve. It's basically been increasing about 45 degrees ever since it's been... Um, it's an incredible story. Yeah, it is incredible it's an incredible story. story. But, but when you but compare it against the term deposit chart, which is nearly a straight line around 5%, you compare it to the, this 45-degree uh, line dividends. But not all companies conform to that particular... Exactly right. Yeah. So, there, so there are good companies and bad companies, but if you look at the market across the whole, it does, you know, it has tended over the last 30 or so years to increase faster than the inflation rate mm. on the whole. Um, and so, of course, you know, the market as a whole, of course, includes the, the good payers, the bad payers, and the, you know, the, the mm. good companies, the, the dud companies. Tony, do you worry that there's been an excessive chase of yield uh, paying stocks? Um, look, potentially so. Um, in what you're saying is that they're now, they're now overvalued. Yeah. I suppose it depends on, what, on how long you actually intend to hold those investments for. Mm. Um, if you are intending to hold them for the long term, then chances are, you know, you haven't necessarily paid too too much as yeah. far as I suppose what you're referring to. Well, as most the price people have bought like. bought CBA at 50 or 60 anyway. That's uh, right. Rather than the, the lowest price in the 80s. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So. Um, Look, I wouldn't. I would, if you, if you're a long-term holder, mm. I wouldn't necessarily see that as particularly an issue. Yeah. But if you are, if chasing the capital growth is as important to you as chasing the income, then yes, it is an issue for you. Um, that's probably more price speculation. Um, I'm more interested in owning a business and businesses that actually earn the profits that pay the dividends. Yeah. Um, yes. It's very Buffettish of you, Matt. Very Buffettish. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, if. Um, Yes, it's not an original thought. No, um, that's a good thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think th the issue is, is that okay, you may pay. Sometimes you may pay a little bit over the odds. Sometimes you may not. Mm. Ultimately, if you're a long-term holder, mm. it, it, it's going to it'll wash out. Oh, great, Tony. Always great to talk to you, and it's great to see you got an investment attitude as well, and, and we're going to learn from it. Okay. Thank you, Peter. And that was Tony uh, Negley, as I say, who's the star rider on the Switzer Super Report when it comes to all the complicated stuff that we, we need help with. After the break, we'll catch up with a young entrepreneur who's got a business that's on a real bounce.